Art thou ready? Hit it. Let's get whimsical, whimsical. There has been a delightfully whimsical trend going around the internet, at least in my corner of the web, which is mostly goblin themed and <laughs> ladies with swords. So there's this thing that people have been doing, which is embroidering specifically onto clothing items to make it look like there's moss and like you just crawled up from the forest floor, which is very alluring to me. <laughs> and pertaining to my interests. That being said, I would love to try this. Start off a little bit small because I know this is probably gonna take about 66 years. I thought maybe I could do a corset or like a bodice because that seems kind of manageable to me. That looks like it was overtaken by moss. Essentially, live out my bog witch dreams, who has been living in the forest in her little hut for 300 years, ventures out into public, not realizing what time period it was and that people don't generally wear corsets save for the cottagecore community. And you know, she had to like peel it out from the moss bed. That's a lie. That's the overall elevator pitch. So we've got some construction to do, we've got some learning to do on how to do the moss embroidery, some just general butzing around and finding out, swamp style. I'm excited. Okay, well, first things first, let's look up some inspiration, shall we? For this project, I'm going to try to draft a pattern that's pretty similar to my other corset bodices. I've just been really inspired by theatrical, foresty looking garments. So I definitely want to try to incorporate that. I'm thinking a green bodice with that embroidered moss kind of dripping down the top of it, and then some sort of flouncy textured sleeves. I feel like this is sort of similar to the shirt that I made for my moss core look, but a little bit more well defined. Frodo has been licking the spot on his arm, and so I had to look up a trick online, and all I had was a striped sock. <laughs> and now he just looks like an emo boy. Lipstick is color, don't bother me, Jules. Would you say that Ohio is for lovers? Do you write sins, not tragedies? Oh, I'll take you the hot topic later, okay? I swear. Okay. I have discovered that there are two main stitches that can really give off kind of like a moss effect. French knots, the turkey stitch. <laughs> so this is the French knot. Over and over and over and over and over and over. We'll give off a moss kind of feeling. This is the turkey stitch, which allows you to cut it and it kind of has like a pom-pom effect or you could leave it loops. If we take Floss. I don't think I've ever done an embroidery project and not massacred the rest of the string um, into a jumbled, tangled mess. And then absolutely just, just berate it with my words. <laughs> Let's just do another French knot. I'm wrapping it around the needle. I'm gonna do it two times there. Sticking it back in. <laughs> Pulling it back through. It's a little loopy. Shloop. So mine are a, a bit more loopy than I think they're supposed to be, but it kind of works for the moss texture. Loop de loop and pull. The turkey stitch. So you pull up here. Uh, I don't remember if it's left or right. Go left. Leave a little loop next to that one. Back to this. <laughs> up through the original hole. I think I may have added an extra step there. I don't think I did that right. Hold on, wait, hold on. I got this. Go up, down, and up again. Down this way. <laughs> she says with absolute confidence. Up through the original loop. Yeah, okay, that did it. You just wanna lock it to make sure that this loop doesn't go anywhere. So then you'll have some loops that you can decide to either leave it like that or if you like, a little trim. And then you have a little pom-pom texture. I'm probably gonna lean more towards the French knot method because I think that looks the most like moss. It's nice to have those two stitches in my tool belt. But before we can get to spending the actual rest of my adult life embroidering, I need to make the bodice. Hey there, champ. Are you getting ready to drape your own pattern, but are going to ignore what professional seamsters do and instead use your limited knowledge of cosplay builds? which may or may not work with fabric and may end in a disaster. Well, then perfect. Grab your materials. And 
remember to keep a perfectly poised and graceful position while working. Yeah, that's perfect. You're gonna wrap that dress form up like a duct tape mummy, and then promptly run out of the said duct tape. Which means it's time to run around the house frantically screaming. Any tape will do. Scotch tape is just dandy. After making your dress form look like something that Imhotep himself would be extremely proud of, it's time to draw on that pattern. And snip! Alright, so first I'm going to make this mock-up layer just to test everything, but it's also going to act as my lining layer if everything goes smoothly. And now that I've got a general idea that it works, time for a little celebratory jig. After sewing it, I did sort of realize that the waistline was a little bit too high for me, so I will be cutting that. But for now, it is time for the outer layer, which I'm going to use this tablecloth that I thrifted a while ago. It ended up being an absolute pain in the tuchus to work with, but we'll cover that later. is ready to embroider over. Okay, so I saw a trick that you could take some felt and build up these sort of topographical terrain looking situation with it to just give some volume to the embroidery and make it look a little bit more like moss. So I did that. I initially tried to use a embroidery hoop for this, but much like Grandmaster Flash in the Furious Five, I was close to the edge. So I took a deep breath and started my quest, which would be a very long one. I started to realize I might be a bit, tiny bit geriatric by the time I finish this project, but we persevere. One hour later. You would be shocked how much in thread this actually goes through, and I tried to use a little bit different color, but I didn't really like how it turned out in the end. Two hours later. To save myself some sanity, I ended up switching over to this tapestry wool, which is clearly much thicker. And it's pretty similar in the end product, so it just saved me so, so much time. It is day three on this, I think. Look, okay, usually uh, at this point in the process, I have a general idea if it's gonna come out okay. Well, let's just say I think this one's gonna be a um, <laughs> wait and see cat project. Right now, I'm not gonna lie to you, it looks like a rug. Sort of ugly Texas-shaped rug. <laughs> We're gonna just work on it and see what we can do. <laughs> I'm really particularly into clothing that tells a story right now for some reason. I think I've said this before in a video, but basically outfits that make you go, huh, this outfit. I affectionately will dub, guess if how many f I give. Uh-oh, oh, oh, steady old boy. Something that I came across while looking for inspiration is this image. I'm not gonna show it yet. You gotta wait. A costume from like the Oberon Theater in the 50s. I'm assuming for Midsummer's Night, Mid Midsummer's Night's Dream? Midsummer's Night Dream? I also have no idea what I'm talking about. So. <laughs> and let me tell you, if you thought I got excited over lamps last video, it is nothing compared to how I feel about this dress. Ready? Oh! <sighs> Baby. 
really empowering to me about making your own clothing is that you can truly just be like, you know what I want to make today? I want to make a shitty rug shirt. And you can. <laughs> Might be 86 years old when I finish this. I, I quite like embroidery. I think it soothes the chaos of my inner being. I suppose you could say I got 99 problems, but 10,000 stitches ain't one. I think part of my problem with this right now is that it's so many different colors of green, which I thought in concept sounded cool and it would look more realistic. It doesn't. Not a spoiler alert. If I boop this around my leg one more time, have mercy. Sort of around the same green. I swear I was uh, born with a curse or maybe inherited a curse that whenever I'm sewing, if there's something that a thread can latch itself onto or around or in, boy howdy, it's gonna do it. Also tangling. The amount of times I've tangled this embroidery thread into what looks like Oscar the Grouch's shower drain, I can't tell you. Well, I'm just gonna keep going here and hope that I can at least finish the threading today. Righto. <laughs> Wish me luck. Everybody, hold up. I saw the smallest frog I've ever seen in my entire life today. Also, this guy. Wait, this has now become a frog spotting channel, by the way. I just want to let you guys know. <laughs> we almost didn't notice him. Hey, man. You're doing great. See you later, I guess. Here's what needs to happen today. <laughs> I'm pretty tired, but we're close to the finish mark here. I just have to do all of the finishing stuff. My final step is gonna be, oh, photo. You with your emo sock. My final step is gonna be painting everything with fabric paint and just like toning everything towards the same color green. But right now I need to do the sleeves. I'm kind of at a loss for, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, you could say it was an afterthought. I got this shirt at thrift store and I thought it was kind of cute. This fraying and I liked the green striped fabric. Save myself some time. Use this waistband and just cut along here. Something like that. I don't know how it's gonna blend with the garment itself. Take the lining wire, add some boning, Sew that all together. Sew the lining onto the outer bodice. Add the sleeves. Add the eyelets on the back for the lacing for the corset. Probably hand sew those. Paint everything. We've got a lot of work to do. Home stretch. We can do it. Let's freaking go. looks like <laughs> let's play is it trash okay so clearly at this point in the project I was not entirely jazzed with how it was coming out so it's time to do a little bit of fabric painting and see if we could fix this I basically just wanted to tone everything and make it look sort of around the same green versus how many different greens I had and then because I'm me and because I didn't really like the color of the bodice, I went over the <laughs> that too. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mainly wanted to change the color a bit and then make it look a little bit more antique -y and old. And I think I did accomplish that, but I still don't know how I feel about it. But with that vote of confidence being said, let's head to the reveal.
It is complete. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> I... Okay, I have very mixed feelings about this. I think it is a hot, steaming mess. But that being said, there are things that I like about it. I think it's mainly like the construction of it that is just absolute garbage juice dripping down your leg. And it's weirdly warm. Sort of crooked, or it might just be an illusion with the moss making it look like that it's cr crooked. I don't, I don't know. It's not a lot of support. I knew that going in. If you want the support that a corset gives you, you need about probably three times more pieces of plastic or steel than I have right now. So it is what it is. Well, also the back is a mess. I didn't reinforce the eyelets, so it's it's very wonky because it's pulling really tight and it doesn't close all the way. It closes more than I thought it was going to while trying it on during this process. I do like it a lot better that I painted it. I was really struggling with how it looked with all the different splotches of green and then the sleeves I felt like didn't really go with it and they still kind of don't but I also don't really mind it. I think it's fine. Generally, really happy with the embroidery and that's that's what I set out to do with this project was try something new. Boy, did it take 73 years with all the teeny tiny microscopic little knots. So small, so many. Yeah, I don't know. Listen, they can't all be national treasures. You have to throw in some, some wicker man in there. It makes your repertoire robust. Like I said, I mainly just wanted to play with some embroidery and make it look like moss. And I, I think that it pretty much does. It also looks like broccoli, but your girl loves broccoli. Yes, it looks like the world map. I don't know how that happened, but it does, and that, I, that's all I can see when I look at it. <laughs> Whatever. I feel like um, a Moulin Rouge can can dance from the swamp. I've been really overwhelmed lately, and just, you know, then my audio decided that it didn't want to work for this video, and I've just, I've been having a time, so I'm glad that I got this done. I hope that you guys had fun watching. Maybe if you, like me, saw this trend on the internet, thought, hey, that's pretty swell. Go for it. Cover everything you own in embroidered moss. That is it. <laughs> I've got some big projects planned for the next month or two, so hold on tight, buckaroos. Usual spiel, Patreon, $5 a month, patreon.com slash Rachel Maxi. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every other Friday and we have fun here. Ooh. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. So, I just snorted. I know exactly what goes on. Holes. 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 When people ask me what I do for a job. Yep. Was it worth it buying this entire outfit just for a bit? You bet your bottom dollar.